so far in the past few weeks here at Survival on Purpose. We've done a video showing some of my favorite big knives, you know, from, from pretty big to honking big. Uh, we've also done a video showing some of my favorite folding knives. Well, I had a request to do a video showing some of my favorite regular mid-sized knives. So that's what we're going to do in today's video, plus a little bonus at the end. That's what's coming up next here on Survival on Purpose. Welcome back to Survival on Purpose. My name is Brian. Thanks for joining me for another sharp, in this case, Sunday video, where it's Sunday and we take a look at something sharp. And like I said, uh, we've looked at some big knives. We've looked at some folding knives. Today we're going to take a look at some regular medium-sized fixed blade knives by request. And probably going to be a little rambling thrown in as I tell you why I picked these knives. Because there's going to be 12 of them. Not in, necessarily in any particular order. And um, I always get comments about, oh, that knife was, there's a better knife for this. That wasn't the right one. Look, these are my favorite, some of my favorite knives. Some of them. Maybe they're not yours. I'm not saying this is the greatest knife for you. I'm just saying they're my favorites. So we're going to take a look at those coming up right after this word from today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Hog Holsters. Hog Holsters are made in the USA and Arizona, and they are without a doubt the most comfortable concealable holster I've ever tested. You can save 10% on your order at Hog Holsters by using the coupon code Survival on Purpose, all one word. That's hogholsters.com. Thanks to Hog Holsters for sponsoring today's video. Okay. We call this one number one. This is the uh, Bear Grylls. They call this one Survival Life when it came out. The, this one has been, I think, discontinued. The, the, the new model is called the Bear Grylls Ultimate Survival Life, and it is a full tang. This is not a full tang. This knife got a lot of hate in the old bushcraft community for being made in China, different things, but I still like it. Uh, just got a pretty good bit of use on it. Came with this... Uh, you know, a little sheath here with some stuff on the back about signaling. And then you open this up here. And it has a diamond stone here. And a ferrocerium rod here. As well as a little whistle here. So it's pretty cool. And this thing came out, it was around, man, 30 bucks or something. Um, there's a new one out. And the new one is 30 bucks. So as I said, so... Still, I think it's a good value. It's certainly not the greatest knife in the world, but it's certainly, in my opinion, it's really not crap. Um, I uh, did a original video on this thing, and then I did a one-year follow-up, and I was really, um, I beat it, beat it up pretty good, and it did fine. So um, it's just got a lot of memories for me. I've had this one for a long time, and it, it survived its testing and, and kind of proved proved my faith in this knife uh, to be well-founded, in my opinion. So. That's the uh, Gerber Bear Grylls knife. Uh, number 11 uh, is the Becker, a uh, K-Bar, uh, Becker designed, Kephart design, and Ethan Becker designed this one based upon a model, um, at least based upon his uh, measurements and his, his examination of, of one of the original Kephart knives that was in unused condition in uh, some museum. And so I posted a video link um in the description below of both my review of this knife and of my interview with Ethan Becker. Pretty cool there. This one, by the way, right now, it was around 100 bucks. It's going for like uh, 160 right now on the old internet. So anyway, that's number that's number 11. Number 10, this is a knife I bought a long time ago. And this is the Gerber Field Knife. And this is, <laughs> you see where I had written on it? For my review, 4.2 ounces and 11 and a half inches overall length. It was 38 bucks at the time. Wow, I forgot I had this written on there. Now it's about 44, and it's um the one that I found that has a sawback on it. So this is the uh, field knife, and it's an F78. The sawback one is an FM81. You can see I've done a little little modification on it here to, to be able to strike a ferro rod because it wasn't sharp. But uh, I like the sheath. I like the knife. I like the knife itself. It's really a field knife slash fighting knife slash almost bayonet. But it also throws really, really well. So I'm, that's probably why I like it so much. So that's the. And it's very, very positive sheath there. So that's the uh, Glock field knife that came in at number ten. Just for some reason, this one just kind of became one of my favorites. Number nine. Number nine. Number nine <laughs> is the. I'm not even going to try Tarava 
Jakari Puko 110, maybe. This is a, I think it's Finnish. And it's kind of, if you remember the Scrama from the big knife video, this is kind of like the, the companion knife to that. Very, very simple. It's an over-molded full tang, carbon steel. The back is, doesn't really have a, a 90 degree spine, but it has a bevel here that's pretty sharp. It will strike a ferro rod. And a nice leather dangler sheath. Um, it's available with a couple different sheath options. And uh, the only place I can find this is from from um, Varus Toluca, I believe is the way you pronounce that, over in, I think it's Finland. And uh, so I put a link to that below. It's around 83 bucks now. I think it was around 50 bucks when I bought it, but it's a very, very comfortable handle and just a very well-made, well-designed workhorse of a knife for well under 100 bucks with a super, including the sheath. It's really around 50 something bucks without a sheath, but that's it. And that was number nine. Number eight. The tops for chemo. This was designed by uh, Joe Flowers, and this is the Bushcraft Global official knife. And this one comes in around 180 bucks um, on the street, and it's just a really, really solid knife. I've, I've reviewed a lot of Topps knives, and I really like this one probably as 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 well or. or better than all of them and I like it enough to, to um it made my my top 12 favorites of so pretty cool there and it's got this a uh, nice little simple kydex sheath but it's uh, just a bow drill divot here big big lanyard ring here and a bow drill divot on both sides nice beefy spine square uh, you know 90 degree spine and it just feels good in my hand so I like it Moving along, number seven. By the way, the tops is made in the USA. Here's one, another one made in the USA, and it's a buck one nineteen. And very, very nice knife in my opinion. Got a nice little fuller here. Uh, just a, the, in my opinion, this is one of the classic hunting knives. Um, and this one comes in around seventy five bucks. I think it's available with a couple different handle options. I post a link to the video, and, the, and one of the video actually was a, was a giveaway knife that I wound up giving away. I got this one. I think this was in a battle box, but I hung on to this one because I uh, I like it so much. It's just a really really classic knife. I like Buck anyway. I think Buck is a great company. They make some really good knives, and they're just some some good folks. And um, I've had the opportunity to speak with C.J. Buck a few times, and he's just a super super nice guy. Um, and again. Um, they're still making a lot of their knives in the USA. So that's the Buck 119, just a classic, classic hunting knife. Moving along to number six. This one we took another look at recently, but I had to include it because it still is one of my favorites, and that's the Havilish, uh Pathfinder trade knife. And this is the original one with a smaller handle. The new ones that they have have a fatter handle, which really, I think, makes it more comfortable to, to use to in my opinion, but this is one I've got. Uh, I've got a lot, of, a lot of use in this knife. Um, I've also got about 14 stitches from this knife at one point in time in my life. So, uh, but it's still one of my favorites. Uh, this was really one of the first, first real knives that I bought when I started, you know, getting into the bushcrafty thing, and it just gets the job done. Made in Georgia, I like that too. Oh, and the price on the new version with a fatter handle is still available from Habilis Bush Tools, and it's about 150. Moving along. We'll go to a, uh, what I think is potentially the best value in this entire list. Um, this knife is around 50 bucks right now on Amazon. And this is the, the Sog Seal Pup, a classic, classic knife. Um, man, I just like this knife. I did a review on this thing years ago. I actually bought one. Um, actually, my son bought one, and I reviewed his. Um, this thing is just super, super cool. Just It just feels great in your hand. It's lightweight. It's very, very well done. It's a not, well, it depends on how you look at full tang. I actually did an interview with um, the founder of, of SOG Tools, SOG Knives at SHOT Show, one of the first times I went, and asked him about that. And the, the, the tang is pretty big in here, so it's pretty solid all the way down, but then it's got this over-molded handle on it. Just really comfortable. Got a nice, um, some sort of plastic sheath uh, with a hybrid with a, that, with the uh, Cordura or nylon on it. Fits in there really well. They have several different versions of this. They have the Elite. I did a video comparing the two. Um, I also had somebody tell me that when they looked at that video that that recently that you know I had the sheath strong, but they come with in different sheath patterns. I guess I don't know, but anyway, that's that's the uh, Seal Pup. In my opinion, for fifty bucks, this may be the best value of all the knives 
that, that, I'm, that I'm looking at here. It's certainly one of my favorite designs of all time. Next, number four. And this is a knife that really I haven't used. It's almost almost not a mid-sized knife. It's it's a it's a good sized knife, but it's not a it's not a big honking knife like the ones I looked at earlier. And that's the K Bar USMC fighting knife. And you notice that one's got my name on it. Uh, this was a gift from my friend John Abbott from Hog Holsters, who is a former or I guess a retired Marine. And made in the USA, just a classic stacked leather handle, uh, leather sheath, and Man, this is just like, it's really, really cool. There's, that's all I can say about it. It's a super cool knife. I've obviously never used it, um, and I won't, I won't use it. Just, I'll keep this one just and put it up, but I, I want to show it to you because it is one of my favorite knives. I'm not done a review on it. This is the only one I think that does not have any kind of review video, but uh, it's just cool enough. I want to show you, and I just like it a lot. So, and probably you can buy one of these today without, without my name on it, of course. For about a hundred and about ninety-five bucks, actually, on Amazon. So under a hundred bucks, not too bad there, to be honest with you. Coming in at number three is a knife that a friend of mine, John Heffron from Wingman One One Five, designed with the folks that work Tough Gear, and it is the Mount Laguna, and it's a really cool knife. Uh, it's big, beefy spine, it's nice medium-sized knife. Feels really good, kind of a modified clip point slash Bowie with a kind of a belly here with a Kydex sheath, with a tech lock style mount on it so you can think a lot of different ways. Snaps in really well. Bow drill divot here on both sides. Um, I think this is a G10 handle. Might be McCarter. I think it's G10. It looks like maybe McCarter with a red liner. And it just, I like this knife. It feels good in my hand. It's very, very balanced. And um, my friend John um, designed it, so that's pretty cool. I mentioned in the big big knife video that John, Ab I'm not John, John, Ab John Heffron and Andy Tran uh, invited me to be on their live weekly um, YouTube stream, live stream, I guess at the time. Like when I had, I don't know, maybe under 100 subscribers. I just started out. I've been doing this for like a few months, and it really, really, encouraged me that they thought enough of me to do that so that's the uh mount laguna from work tough gear uh, designed by wingman 115 so that is number three and this one holds a special place in my heart moving along to number two and since it's number two we're going to give you a twofer because these two knives are very very similar we'll look at the at the first one first and that is the gerber prodigy and um this knife and nowadays it is around 82 bucks when i bought this one and first did a video on it, it was somewhere in the neighborhood of 50 bucks maybe under 50 bucks that was about 10 years ago uh, this is a full tank over molded knife made in the usa um just very robust My friend magnus anderson over in sweden um can can do miracles with this knife he, he just he, he absolutely uses this for everything um so I like it a lot. It's got a great feel of a handle, super strong. This one has been beat all to pieces. A nice modular kind of sheath. And it's very similar to that, since we got a twofer, is the Gerber Strong Arm. It's very similar. It's also very similar in price. This one's like 90 bucks instead of 82. And it was around 50 bucks as well. You can see the Prodigy has a serrated edge. The Strong Arm was available serrated or, or non-serrated. So I got the non-serrated. You can see the blades, it's, it's essentially the same blade with a different handle. Um, this handle is a little more symmetrical, not quite. It's still got a more of a belly on this end, but it just, uh, it's very, very well done knives. And these things, again, made in the USA, super, super solid knives, and also very, very excellent values. Um, again, at 50 bucks, they were great, and they're still under 100 bucks, so I uh, can't complain about that. That's the uh, strong arm here and the Prodigy here. Now, we're going to go to number one. And I just had to show you this. This is another knife that has not been used and probably won't be, just like the, the Marine Corps knife. Uh, but this one is certainly cool. This is probably the most expensive fixed blade I've ever bought. This is the Randall Knives Model 1 all-purpose fighting knife. And this is the one that started it all. I'm pretty sure this is the one um, that Jack Guy Clark wrote a song about his father's Randall knife. This is the classic one that was on the very first Randall Knives catalog. And this is absolutely 
just a work of, not only a work of art, but it's, it's it's also man just a classic piece of history. A lot of people went, in, a lot of soldiers went into World War II with this knife on their hip, and just stacked leather, um, handmade, handcrafted, custom crafted knife with a nice leather sheath with a little uh, wet whetstone in there. A uh, Randall knives from Orlando, Florida. So. I had somebody ask me uh, about this one on the big knives, and this is, um, I guess you could call this a big knife, but I call this a medium-sized knife, <laughs> but um, I really like this knife. It's really cool, so there's that's the Randall, and that, and that was number one, um, and for a reason, because it really is like one of, the, one of the most special knives that I have. And now, I said if you stick around to the end, also, I have a little makeup knife from last week's folding knife, favorite folding knife video. Because like I said in those videos, I'd, um, I'd packed some stuff up and had trouble finding it. Well, I found this one. Chuck Norris went to a feminist convention, and the women there ironed his shirts and made him some sandwiches. This is a folding knife. And this is the very, uh, the second video I ever made on the channel was about this knife. I bought this knife in July of 2013. This thing's got a lot, a lot, a lot of use. Um, you can see I had a little belt. I made a little belt loop for it. You know, great stitching there, and with a, with a uh, dummy cord on it and a key ring thing to keep it um, from falling out, of, from getting lost. Because uh, when I was a scoutmaster, this knife was in my pocket every time we went camping. I really like it a lot. Done a couple of videos on it, but I'll show you what it has: a big blade, a little blade. This is just like my, this, to my mind, this is the perfect Swiss Army knife. A big blade, a small blade. It has a very, very effective little saw blade for doing all sorts of camp tasks. This one has a pair of scissors. I always like scissors on knives. That's just a really, very useful thing to have. It also has the classic uh, can opener and small screwdriver and a bottle opener and larger screwdriver and a little, I think that's a wire stripper they call it, I don't know. And then on the back side, it has an awl, which is very, very handy. It, and you can use it for sewing or boring holes in wood. It's got a little hole for, for, for needles, small bank line will fit in there. Then it has here a hook, which is also really good, not only for carrying things, but it's good for tightening up knots. And then it has a Phillips head screwdriver. And of course, a pair of tweezers and a toothpick. So again, that's the Victorinox Swiss Army Fieldmaster, in my opinion, um, potentially the most useful all around Swiss Army knife there is. And um, 50 bucks, I think it's, it's, it's still a good bargain. All righty, well that was a hopefully minimally rambling look at, we'll call it a baker's dozen with the two Gerbers, of my favorite fixed blade knives in the medium to, to regular size range. Uh, with the uh, extra folder thrown in at the end. And if you like this kind of video, let me know in the comments below. I've actually kind of got sort of an idea to do a video, maybe some of my favorite straight knives, because I've reviewed a lot of straight knives over the years. And I actually was gonna include some of them in this video. I thought, no, maybe I'll just do a separate straight video. I have so many of them and so many favorites there. Maybe uh, favorite neck knives, maybe some of my favorite fighting tactical style knives. Who knows, maybe axes or something like that too. I've got some, some different axes and tomahawks. So if you like this kind of video, let me know. And if you like this video, I'd really appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you're not subscribed to the channel, it'd be really helpful if you do that, if you like these videos. And um, as always, I sincerely appreciate you watching Survival on Purpose. Remember, survival's not an accident, so be prepared. I'll see you next time.